I had a few offcuts of birch plywood in various thicknesses and I'm going to use these to make a sliding door cabinet for my office. A couple of months ago I built this desk for the room and now I need a piece of furniture for all of this stuff that's been in a pile on the floor ever since, for things like my printer and some stationery. I start by ripping down the top, bottom and side panels at the table saw to what will be the depth of the cabinet. And then I trim them to length and I'm mainly using the track saw here because it gives me a really nice clean cross grain cut. Because I'm using offcuts for this one and those offcuts were in varying thicknesses like 6mm, 15mm, 18mm and 25mm, I had to get a little creative with the material that I had available to get panels that were the right size and thickness. And I recorded a separate video all about that which I'll leave a link to in the description box. Before assembling the cabinet I need to cut some housing grooves for the sliding doors and I decided to make those using the table saw and for this I'm going to use my 6mm kerf flat grind grooving blade. I'll leave a link to this in the description box and I'm using my combination square to set the blade height to 5mm. Then I can mark up where I want to make my cuts and the spacing here is 10mm from the front then an 8mm groove to a depth of 5mm then 8mm and then another 8mm groove to a depth of 5mm. I set my table saw fence so that the blade is lined up with the first groove and then I can make the cut to the bottom panel and this was trickier than I expected, particularly on these longer panels because I had to make sure that the workpiece didn't stray away from the fence because that would mean my grooves would not be straight. And at the end of these cuts it did have a tendency to start creeping away from the fence. In hindsight setting up a featherboard for this cut would have been a good idea. Making the same cut to the shorter panels wasn't so bad. I then moved the fence over by 2mm and made another pass to widen the groove to 8mm. And same again for the side panels. And then I repeated the process again for the second groove. These 8mm grooves should be perfect for my 6mm plywood which I'll be using for the doors, giving just enough wiggle room at the front and the back of the doors for them to slide. I then set the combination square to 15mm so that I can set the blade height to cut grooves into the top panel and I'd already noted the positions of the fence when I made each cut to the bottom and side panels so that my cuts to the top panel will be consistently placed. Using a router for these grooves might be a better option, I think it really depends what tool you're more comfortable with. Next I want to cut a housing groove for a centre panel and this time I'm going to use a router with a straight bit installed. I positioned my centre panel using the speed square and marked a line either side. I can then line up the router bit with the inside of my pencil line and I'm going to clamp my speed square in place to use as a fence. I made a couple of passes lowering the bit to about 5mm and then moved the fence over until the bit was touching the inside of the next pencil line and repeated the process. A bit of sanding cleans up the torn out grain and then I can chisel the end of the groove square to accommodate my panel. And it fits pretty nicely. I want to leave some space at the back of about 10mm for where a back panel will be added later so I'm going to cut this panel to 270mm wide. For assembly it's important to make sure that my housing grooves line up perfectly so once positioned I made some pencil lines for where I'll add floating tenons and I labelled each corner so I remember where everything needs to go back together. And I used the domino to cut some 8mm mortises. At this point I decided it would be good to have some adjustable shelves and I had the idea of using dominoes to make shelf pins. I made a separate video all about that too and I'll leave a link to it in the description box. I can then sand the inside faces of the cabinet and finally start to assemble the carcass. When I cut the dominoes earlier I made sure to do it on the medium width setting so that I can get my housing grooves at the front perfectly aligned. And I added parallel clamps before wiping away the excess glue with a damp cloth and checking for square by measuring the diagonals. And it was a little off so I added some plywood squares at the corners just to bring it into square. After a few hours I removed the clamps and used my hand plane just to true up the edges where needed. I fitted a rebate bit in my router so that I can cut a recess at the back of the carcass to accommodate a back panel. 
I made three passes, lowering the bit each time until the rebate was around 8mm deep. Before adding the back panel though, I needed to install the centre panel into the groove at the bottom. I make sure it's square, and then I can secure the top in place by drilling a couple of pilot holes and adding screws. This unit is going to have a solid wood top added later, which will hide the screw heads from view. I found a bit of 4mm plywood which will be perfect for my back panel. I just need to cut it to size, round over the corners, and glue and pin it in place with some 18 gauge brad nails. Next I wanted some dark coloured hardwood to make some edge banding and I almost used some of these mahogany hat and coat stands but then I found a piece of sapili that had so many cracks in it that this workpiece won't be much good for much else so I decided to rip some 4mm strips off this instead. Usually I'd want to mitre these joins but as my bottom and side panels are different thicknesses I didn't really want to overcomplicate things, so straight cuts will do the job here. And I'm leaving these all oversized until the glue dries. And then I can get most of the excess off with a few swipes from my block plane until almost flush, and remove the rest with my random orbit sander. Despite the lack of mitres, I think it turned out great and then I just ease over the sharp edges by hand with some 100 grit sandpaper. With the carcass done, I'm moving on to making the leg frames and I'll be using some salvaged hardwood for this which is all twisted and warped, so I first need to mill it up to get it straightened out. And this wood has evidence of woodworm, which I don't believe is still active, but I treated it with a few coats of woodworm killer just to be on the safe side. The leg frames that I'm making here are basically the same as the ones I made for my desk drawer units in a previous video which is linked in the description box, so I'm not going to talk through this in too much detail. But as you'll see, I'm cutting bridle joints to join the corners together, which I really like the style of, and they're going to provide lots of strength. I used the router table to add a round over to the leg frames. And then I can get them glued to the side panels, flush with the back. As there's so much gluing surface on these legs, I didn't add any screws as the glue alone will be plenty strong enough. And more by luck than judgement, these clamps had just enough capacity for this glue up. If they'd have been a millimetre shorter, then I would have needed to find some other way to clamp this up. So that was nice. After a few hours, I can remove the clamps and lift the cabinet up, and measure up for the doors, which I cut with a track saw. And the trick here is to creep up on the sides so that they can be lifted up into the deeper groove on the top panel, and then dropped into the grooves at the bottom. I expected to have to remove a millimetre or two of material to get these to fit, but I somehow managed to get it right on the first attempt, and they seem to work really nicely. Each door was cut about 25mm wider than the openings, so that they overlap in the centre and you don't see any gaps when the doors are closed. Then it was on to finishing, and I popped the unit onto my rolling offcuts bin so that I could move it around, and I removed the doors so that I can spray them separately, and I'm using water-based varnish straight from the can, but through a filter just to keep it clean. This is the first time I've ever sprayed the inside of a cabinet like this, and it caused a lot of overspray coming back into my face, so safety squint was engaged. 
Coverage on the inside was still good though. I'm not sure how the professionals handle this sort of job. Maybe turning the airflow down on the gun would have helped. I'm keen to hear any thoughts in the comments if you can help. Holding a light up to the surface allows me to check that I've got good coverage. And after an hour or two, I denib with 400 grit wet and dry paper, brush away the dust and reapply a second coat. I added a bit of my handmade oil wax, which by the way is available for sale on my Etsy page, just onto the bottom of the doors and the grooves on the cabinet just to help them glide better and then I buffed it away with a cotton cloth. Then I can install the shelves and finally get all of my stuff put away. I ordered some of these lovely solid brass handles online. These are miles apart in terms of quality from the nasty coated nickel ones that you usually find in the shops. And these are the same handles I used on my desk drawers which were gifted to me by Barn and Brass. Link to their website in the description box below. I'm yet to make the solid wood top for this cabinet. There may or may not be a future video about that depending on whether it turns out to be an interesting project or not. This project went relatively smoothly, although I do have an issue. The six millimeter plywood that I used to make the doors was salvaged. And as you can see, it was very dirty and it had some staining, which I sanded to clean up. And it looked pretty clean after sanding. However, after applying finish, some of the staining has reappeared on one of the doors. And I really don't like the way that it looks. So I might sand it back again, maybe even apply some oxalic acid to try and remove the staining and then refinish it or I might end up making new doors entirely because I actually have some six millimeter birch plywood on order for a future project. But we'll see. This project took me about 18 hours in total to complete. I'm really pleased with it though. I really like the sliding doors and the domino shelf pins. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos if you'd like to help support the channel plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. You'll find links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thank you for watching.